The island of Panglao is a small fishing haven with amazing coral reefs and a recovering dive industry. But its reefs are in trouble. The island has suffered a triple threat. COVID-19, a once in a 12 year typhoon, and climate change. Brian Camargo, a locally born Panglaoian who returned home after a life in New Zealand, has been building an environmentally friendly dive operation, Haka Dive Center, that includes a coral nursery where newly collected coral fragments are suspended in midwater so they can regrow and be planted on the damaged reefs. Bry, as he is known, has teamed up with the Philippine-based Mead Foundation, the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium from Utah, and Atlantis Dive Resorts and Liveaboards to operate and maintain that nursery and promote outplanting, as it's known, amongst professional and recreational divers. Brile Camargo. It started back in 2016, and I became a diver, and through that I worked my way up to be a dive professional. I was teaching people how to dive, really, and I've always seen, being in the industry, I've always seen that there's a problem with underwater and things need to be done. And it just happened that I meet the right people, um, give me the opportunity to do something like this. I've always wanted to do this, um, awareness and conservation, uh, not just to teach people or taking people out to dive, but actually also telling them about what's happening and how we should preserve them for the next generation. Now, divers can explore the nursery as well as the reefs and help maintain and outplant new corals, becoming part of a solution that will last a lifetime. So my operation in Bohol, when I took over the project, we took over, uh, we have this thing called Coral Tree Nursery, which is the technology and mythology came from uh, the Florida Keys in, in the United States. Uh, people from uh, Loveland Living Planet Aquarium, which is one our uh, the owner of this project, who so basically uh, teach me, train me, and give me all the knowledge and resources, and also the budgeting and things that need to be done are all coming from them through the, our partner, the NGO and nonprofit, uh, the Mid Foundation. On any local dive. Newly outplanted corals can be seen thriving in the nutrient-rich waters, like these, planted before the typhoon. And as you can see, the trees have weathered the storms by using techniques developed by the Coral Restoration Foundation in the Florida Keys. The growth is simply amazing. The reefs are, in themselves, a civilization seldom seen by most humans. So we were working already to expand the nursery. Uh, with the typhoon, it didn't really help. And it doesn't really often happen, this devastation. It can be from 10 to 12 years. It doesn't happen every year. But luckily, with the mythology that we use, it's coming from Florida Keys, if you're familiar with it. That's where all the hurricanes in the U.S. pass through. It's a passage of hurricane. So at the moment, we're on our fourth, fifth year. And a coral res uh, restoration, it takes time. It's, it's really a long-term objective. It's, you know, I always say it's, it's a marathon rather than a, a sprint. But we are now at the expansion rate that we are planting a lot of coral fragments back to its natural reef and we're saying about a 70% a success rate. This work has also begun on the island of Negros at the Atlantis Dive Resorts and Liveaboards facility in Dumaguete. But that's another story, so stay tuned. <laughs>